Welcome to the very first episode of SMA Talks, a monthly series where the Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael Grinston, discusses important topics that directly impact the day-to-day -day business of the U.S. Army. This month, our topic is leader development. In FM 6-22, the Army defines leader development as the deliberate, continuous, sequential, and progressive process founded in Army values that grows soldiers and Army civilians into competent and confident leaders capable of decisive action. SMA, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. And I'm really excited about this series, you know, of SMA Talks. This just really gives me an opportunity to kind of flatten the organization. You can hear what's going on at the Department of the Army and, and what's going on in our Army that, you know, I get a chance to see as I travel throughout the Army. So I'm really excited about this series. Thank you, Sergeant Major. And uh, so first off, uh, as an NCO, what does leader development mean to you? When you do leader development and you own the problem, you don't look at NCOs and think, well, that's somebody else's problem. And I'll give you an example. Unfortunately, I've got more than one of these examples, but I'll just use one. Is I was doing a VTC at an unnamed location, and you know, because we're in the covert environment, and so we had a lot of Sergeant Majors on the screen. It was pretty much post-wide. And a battalion Sergeant Major said, well, Sergeant Major, you know, our NCOs in the professional military education, they're not getting, they're not get, you know, they don't understand on how to be NCOs. And he's, he kept complaining about his NCOs. And unfortunately for him, right in front of everyone, I just stopped and I said, well, Sergeant Major, that's your fault. Um, it's kind of harsh. Yeah. But um, unfortunately, that's kind of how I feel about leader development is it's our responsibility to take ownership. If, if I'm a first sergeant, I'm a battalion sergeant major, or if I'm a brigade sergeant major, and I'm talking about the NCOs in my organization on how they're not either performing their job or how they're doing, I look internally, I look at myself and say, I haven't done my leader development. What am I going to do to make this situation better? And I think that's what it means to, to do leader development. And you mentioned uh, first sergeants and battalion command sergeant majors. What, what are their roles as far as defining leader development and working with their junior NCOs? I think it's been pretty simple. I've used the model two levels to down my entire career. So if you're a first sergeant, you know, platoon sergeants, staff sergeants, you, you kind of own that. Uh, if you're a battalion sergeant major, you should be doing leader development for a sergeant and platoon sergeants. Platoon sergeants, you own that as a battalion sergeant major. So that's how you can see, you know, if you're talking poorly about the NCOs in your organization, you did your leader development, and you instilled this pride in your organization about what right looks like, and here's the standards and discipline in your organization as a battalion sergeant major to your platoon sergeants, and they get it, and they understand it then all the NCOs are good. And then the first sergeant gets that, and then he teaches it, and it makes sure that the staff sergeants get it um, in our leader development. If you do your leader development two levels down, and that includes me, you know, if I go, I own the course our majors, and I, I talk to three star level star majors every month across the globe, and I think, I don't think I'll ever stop doing my leader development. I think that's, that's, it's important, and when you go two levels down, you'll see how important it is, and you just kind of share that all the way down. Sergeant Major, at that level, how can you work with those Sergeant Majors, those core Sergeant Majors, to help them become better leaders? Well, it's about doing the leader development, and it takes some time. You know, the Army's busy, the Sergeant Majors in the Army's busy, but we can't be too busy to take time to talk to them about how to be a, a three-star star major, how to be a core star major. It's important. They've never done that job before, and when I moved to that job, I didn't know how to do it. Uh, they need some help. We all do. We, we got to continuously learn in every job, and every job I've had in the Army, I learned. I, I'm still learning to this day, and it's helpful when you can have somebody you could talk to uh, and do that development because maybe you haven't done that job in the before, and I think that's our, all our responsibility to help those NCOs. That's the future. Uh, they're going to they're gonna move up, um, and a few years from now, I may be gone, and one of them are going to be the Sergeant Major of the Army. And I have a responsibility to help them make sure that they're prepared to do this position. 
Thank you, Sergeant Major. And I got another question for you. Uh, how does leader development transcend the line between operating and generating force? Well, I think in the generating force, when you go to your professional military education, you're going to get education. And it's a small part of your education. And that goes back to what I was talking about before when I said it, it's your responsibility to do your leader development. Let's take the basic leader course. In the basic leader course, you're going to get some education, and that's going to last for about 30 days. So they give you the basics. Here's the doctrine. This is what you're supposed to do. This is exactly the way you do it. And you get that for 30 days. And then if I'm a specialist, soon to be sergeant in my unit, I've got three years. So the, the operational force has to reinforce that for three years or that 30 days isn't going to make up for the other three years that you don't do anything. So you're going to get the education in the generating force, but it has to be reinforced day after day, year after year, month after month in the operational force. And if we don't do that, I think without one uh, or the other, we're not going to be as good as we should be. So that kind of goes back to entrusting, you know, those specialists soon to be sergeants, you know, maybe with some small tasks here and there and helping to build that confidence yeah, as, as a leader. Yeah. Uh, if we don't, if we don't train those specialists, you know, to replace us, you know, we, we're probably not doing our job. And uh, Sergeant Major, I have another question for you. Um, when you became a Command Sergeant Major, what is something you felt that you did right? And what's maybe something that you would do differently in regards to developing leaders? Well, I really prided myself uh, with doing uh, leader development. And I really took a lot of time. Um, but when I first became a battalion CSM, um, we immediately you know, deployed to combat. It was about two months later. So my leader development, you know, didn't start like right away. Um, it was just a different time. But I think what I learned um, over time as a new Sergeant Major and what I help out is, is you have to do your leader development. It doesn't matter if you're going on operational deployment, you're going to combat. It, you really need to put a lot of effort into that. That's the most important thing. No matter where you're at, continuously do that. I think the second thing that I think I really wish I would have done better is taking time not just to do leader development, but listen and be a, a better mentor. And I think leader development and mentorship are different. Um, being a mentor is you're always there, you're listening, you're not judging, you're coaching. You may not even take action, you just listen. It's not for action. I think leader development is leader development. I'm trying to make you a better staff sergeant, and now I am listening. And if you were to tell me something, I am going to take some action. Yeah. Uh, so there's, I think there's a, there's a fine line. I actually don't think they're, they're actually synonymous. They're not the same. But I really wish as a young battalion sergeant major I'd been a better mentor. Thank you, sergeant major. And we have one last question for you, and it comes from one of your Twitter followers, at Cyber Otters writes, what are your recommendations for how to treat council prospective NCOs who didn't answer SHARP or EO board's questions satisfactorily? Is there a criteria for a go, no go um, for something of, for them not answering questions correctly? Thank you for the question and thanks at Cyber Otter. I think he's winning. This is the second <laughs> time uh, we've used his question. Super so. fan. Super fan. <laughs> good for you. He's doing good. And, uh, but it actually is, it's a really good question. So I, I believe it may not be a right or wrong answer um, for some of those questions. When you do the situational questions for Sharp and EO, there'll be answers that you may not get the full context. So that's why it's so important to have a situational question. And we have a battalion sergeant major and a first sergeant in the room asking those questions. So a lot of times, and I remember, you get to the board and you go in and you've answered the questions, you walk out and people go, well, how'd you do? And you go, I don't know. And then later you're either promotable or not. And it's like, yeah. man, I'm promotable. I feel good about it. 
Well, now this is the time if you go for leader development and you say, well, you may still be promotable, but we don't think you really answered this question on Sharp and EO right. Let's talk about this. And your first sergeant in there should take the time to AAR and say, you may be promotable, but you need to work in this area. And it's a coaching moment. It's a leader development opportunity that gets us all moving in the right direction. And, and that's how I think if you don't really correctly answer the question, um, it's more important to do some leader development afterwards. So directly following up, because I know uh, I've been through a few boards myself, and <laughs> the sergeant major would be like, you know, I, you were completely off the boat on this one, um, but you were so confident that I wanted to believe you, and then that it kind of left it at that um, without actually coming back and being like, you know, here's the correct answer, here's what you should have said, and here's why. And you're looking for that type of follow-up because that would really grow that leader development and help empower those NCOs. Yeah, it, it's really about making our Army better. Uh, when you get into the promotion board, um, we want to build a better leader. And I think through the situational questions as opposed to rope memory where, who is the Sergeant Major of the Army? And everybody gets that answer right. So <laughs> They should. They should, they should, <laughs> absolutely. Nobody, I never missed that one, I'm sure of it. But when you get into a situational question, it's not as easy and it should be complex. And sometimes, like I said, they may not be right or wrong. What we did with the Department of the Army X Ward was to give you some situational questions that are difficult so that we build a better leader and not just someone that has the memory that just can regurgitate what the regulation has and can think through a problem. This is about having a thinking and developing NCO core that we've always had, and can they deal with the difficult subjects that we're dealing with right now? And if we don't get the right answers, we coach them through it. So when they walk out, they fully understand what the battalion sergeant major and the first sergeants, where they want them to go, they understand the direction, and they do their leader development after that. And I think this is about making a better army. Thank you, Sergeant Major. And do you have any parting thoughts for our viewers? I would just say that leader development is all our responsibility. This isn't just an NCO. It's not just an officer thing. It's not a warrant officer. It's about all of us taking the time and having ownership about where we want our Army to be. If there's something that we're not doing correctly, is it somebody else's responsibility? Or am I going to take the responsibility for the actions of my unit or my organization and make it better. So you develop a plan, put it on a schedule, and be adamant that this has to go. You talk during your training meetings, you get concurrence from your commanders and say, this is so important for the future of our Army that we have to do our leader development. It is the future. If we're talking about people first, then leader development is extremely important and has to be planned for. Thank you so much, SMA, for being here. No, thank you. And thanks to those watching online right now. And next month's topic of discussion is NCO authority and the 2020 update to Army Regulation 600-20. If you have any questions for the SMA or ideas for future episodes, please leave them in the comments section or use hashtag SMA Talks on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you so much, Sergeant Major. Thank you.